Hey there game makers and welcome back to another advanced video tutorial and today we're going to discuss a really crucial and important topic so don't skip on this one because it's super important it will save you a lot of time a lot of headaches believe me i've been there so um you will learn today how we do did it the old school way it was just simple variables we upgraded to arrays then we upgraded even double to structs and then we go to the final boss, which is the holy, the one way, not the one way, but <laughs> in my opinion, one of the easiest and best ways how to organize, uh, I don't know, inventory systems, unlockables, and God knows whatever you want to do in constructors. So these things are powerful beasts and they are definitely more easier than DS lists and DS grids and God knows what the other funky things are in game maker um so yeah highly recommend it and once again a um, little requirement for the undertale series starting tomorrow so here if you don't understand what arrays and constructors are you won't be having too much of a fun time so let's um, focus on that stuff and if you want to join me on this small little journey then stick around this is OneUp Indie. I am a developer. So if you like what you're seeing and hearing, then why not consider sharing, liking and subscribing to the channel, of course. So let's start off with the old school way. So let's say you have one item. So this is one of them between zero to six. So seven items in total. And then each one has just two values at the beginning. Later on you can advance, that is of course up to you. And then each thing has one variable. And then if you're just thinking like, ooh, this could get out of hand, yes, it does, believe me. Let's say you have 100 items. That means you just have for two values, 200 variables, just out of the box, like wow, see. Why do we do this? Well, I guess because we have to. Uh, <laughs> so here, very inefficient way, because once again, um, if you have some typos and so on debugging hell is waiting right for you if you just do it with that is it possible yes is it a good idea no so let's upgrade it a little bit so how can we do this well we use the magic arrays get away so now you have these um, arrays which having the same name so basically you just have one array with different indexes so zero one two and so on and then as you can see um, this is making life much easier and then let's say you want to have the name or the image then you just need to know hey what kind of index position does it have so is it zero is it one two three or whatever so here definitely a better way and you save a lot of hassle because this is making life much easier but of course not the most optimal way because you still need to have 200 <laughs> entry points which, uh, which you need to write down like this. And then of course, it's just index positions here, typos are uh, the way to go. So uh, we can do better. So how can we do this? Well, we use the magic, the upgrade two times, structs. And structs are kind of similar. Basically, this is a collection of variables uh, chained together. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we have a variable which is called item drink horn or item magic box and in this we have kind of sub values so for example name or the image i have to do it because name is already used for something else um so let's say we want to have the name of the drinking horn so we just say drinking horn dot name but let's say later on we want to have the um the name of the magic box magic box name and then for example we could swap out this part which is once again making things a lot of uh, you know making just things easier in general just quick explanation for structs if you want to have the long explanation video link in description below so you can just watch that out watch out for that and just see it if you like so structs are a little bit differently structured um, so normally you have a variable then you set it to i don't know your value and then you end with the semicolon and then boom this is how the whole structure is structs are a little bit different so first of all you have the same structure so a variable name set to and then you get your brackets and inside you have different syntax so you're setting stuff with the double point 
and then the next entry because this is how that works is a comma so for example if you don't do it it will say like, uh, what is this so here this is how their, their structure is a little bit different but of course um, here the great idea of struct is that you can chain stuff together and then you can I don't know drink on uh, name and then you can even have sub things so na name of the something something so you can just you know do the German thing and then <laughs> create a one one really 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 long word because in Germany you can actually do that you can just chain one thing together to make one long word so that's possible so here once again pretty efficient way how to structure data and then um, you know make kind of sub elements of that and then well this is the way that goes but let's go for the final boss the ultimate upgrade he wrote it the constructor so one to rule them all why is that because a constructor is actually creating one template thing of that each time which is great so here for example uh, you would need to know what kind of variable how is this called or how is this called eh, let's get this out out of the way so how can we do this kind of easy with uh, should we cheat yes we should cheat um so we say function boom give it a specific name call it whatever you like set create i just like to have this you know very um easy in this kind of regard then item create and then normally you could close it down and you would have kind of a function but this is not what we're looking for for now we want to have a constructor Oop. and then here we go and this is how that works so let's say we want to create a new entry because now this thing is creating us a new struct so for that we just have I don't know, item array create come on set it to zero and then let's say i don't know var i let's call it index zero and then for example we say like hey we want to have our first entry our first item item number number one here we go we say hey item because this is an array we need to put in an index and put this one and say that like, hey new create item and then we have created our new item and then of course we just say like hey index dot 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 and then we can actually create a new item and this is how we could you know do this and this is the the easy way so how can we you know utilize for example the name and the whole thing in here so kind of easy so let's say we have do we do it with id just uh, just make it like this we have inside two variables i just call it item name and item image and for that once we create a new struct just say like hey name and spr as you can see they will be yellow because they're temporary variable and once we are creating with our constructor a new struct we are instantly having those values being you know overwritten so here it will now say like hey dude i need two values so for example here for our first item is the drinking horn and then spr well this one and basically boom we have created out of nothing our first item and then we can do the same for the next one because here the index is now one then we have the second index position and as you can see here we just add i don't know here do it like this and then we can add as many items as we like because this array is well, dynamic it's flexible so basically it will just expand to well, the how many items we have in 5 10 or 200 thousand it doesn't really matter Hopefully it's 200,000. That could be quite a lot, but it doesn't matter. So here, then for example, the second item is the magic box. And boom, this is how that works. And this is the beauty because for now, we just need to know what kind of index position this specific item has. This is basically 
the one number which is ruling the whole thing. So let's say somewhere we want to take and uh, we want to have, for example, the image being drawn. So we need this variable, this specific array, and then we just need, I don't know, a specific number in here, chain it with a dot, and boom, we are getting the image or for example, the name with this specific index. And of course, we can reference it, it wherever we like. So here, this is how we take um, get those two values. And the only thing which is be being changed is this little index number. And this is that's why I'm said like, hey, one index to rule them all. And just to give it um, a little bit of context, so let's say we uh, copy the whole thing because we want to. So let's say once again we start it. So each of these items which we are collecting here have uh, one specific index assigned. And this index, this number, is grabbing all the values. And then, for example, once we collect it, it's being passed down and then into another array. And then this array is saying, like, hey, draw this sprite and draw this specific name because it has, I don't know, an index three or five or whatever. And it has the same index here and just drawing out the name like shown or drawing out the whole sprite. So how does that look like in the dude? Where are you? So basically we just, first of all, grabbing from our controller. This is where we are storing all the stuff in the create event so we are just bunkering it, it there item this is the array which we created which is collecting all the items then the one index to rule them all and then for example here dot the image index and then we just draw that thing um, I don't know like here and then we are getting once again the name and the sprite being drawn on that so hopefully you do understand the power of that because just with this one number you could unify it and then for example later on maybe in development you're adding 10 new items and then what you do you just add them uh, like this for example here as a new entry and because this is being modular it, ma it makes no uh, no issues because you just add it like the other ones just give it a different name, a different image, and boom, out of out of the box, everything's working fine because it's it's dynamic. And let's say you, one last thing, let's say you want to advance the whole thing because here you can just input. I'm not gonna, I'm not even sure between 10 or 12, uh, or maybe 15 values in total. So here this is kind of limited, how many entries or how many things you can input. So to advance this thing, let's say you're having more values which you want to have. And let's say some items do have them, some don't. Let's say, for example, it has, uh, I don't know, another variable. It has cost and unlocked. And then you can put inside this constructor another function. Call it whatever you like. I just call it set values. Then here um, have two variables and then just override these things. And then, for example, if I say like, hey, on the on the drinking horn, we're having more stuff. So we just say like, hey, set values, chain that together with a dot. And then once it will say like, hey, dude, two values missing. So it's costing 100. And is it unlocked? Yes. And this is, for example, how you could um, build the whole thing modularly. So here, once again, if you want to have more stuff to it, you just add and then each time you are creating one of those structs it will grow in size and then it has then more values more modularity and you can just add things on the fly and it will not break the whole thing and you don't have to remember okay what kind of variable was there what kind of variable was here because you're just unifying it under one umbrella to rule them all so hopefully you do understand the power of it because now you can basically build a pretty sweet um, inventory system with it where all the entries are preset here for unlockables it's also pretty decent it is um, 
for, I don't know, you can even use it for um, pass in values. So let's say you're just collecting stuff, let's say in vamp vampire survivor style, and then you have some weapons which you want to use, and then you could just copy stuff over. So it has tons of uses, and therefore, this is the, the golden way, the best way, at least in my opinion, one of the best ways how to store tons of data. And then you just need one tiny little number, which is this one here in the middle. So, and then everything else you can just get from there. So hopefully it, it makes sense. That was it from my side. Hopefully not too convoluted. You would now understand then going from the old school way, upgraded to arrays, then going to structs and then the constructor is creating our structs on the fly with um, well the new operator. If you do it without, this will not work just uh, because the keyword is definitely needed. And then we are st storing all new um, items, all new structs into this array. And boom, this is the way that goes. So hopefully you do understand this and see you in the Undertale series video. Have a good one. One up indie.